This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, April the 26th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Ricarius, born in northwest France in A.D. 560 to pagan parents. As a young adult, he gave shelter to two Welsh missionaries, Freaker and Kadok, who were being treated badly by other locals. They stayed with him a bit, and he was convinced to convert. And he took quickly to fairly intense penance, and eventually became a priest and a missionary himself. He went to England and gained a reputation for miraculous healings. He may have started the tradition of clergy riding donkeys rather than horses. And toward the end of his life, he founded two monasteries not far from his hometown and retired to the life of a hermit. He died today in 645 A.D. at the age of 85. Today is also the feast of Our Lady of Good Counsel. And this is a strange and interesting story. Way back in the 400s, a small Italian town of Genazzano gave a lot of money for the construction of the major basilica of St. Mary Major, San Maria Maggiore. In appreciation, the Pope funded a small church in their town. Just shy of a thousand years later, the little church is in need of some repair, as can happen in a millennium. A local widow had invested her time and money to do some of the repairs, but she ran out of cash. And then on the Feast of St. Mark, which was yesterday, a mysterious cloud accompanied by exquisite music descended on the church and broke a small piece of wall away to reveal an 18-inch square fresco of the Blessed Virgin Mary behind the wall. Since then, all kinds of miracles have happened in the presence of that image, and several popes and saints have made the trip to the tiny church to see the image and ask Our Lady for her prayer. While some people believe that the image was miraculously transported from a church in modern-day Turkey, others believe the image was always behind the wall and that there's more to see if the rest of the old wall were broken away. The image itself is neither especially unique or well executed. It's a beautiful, delicate fresco, one of probably 50,000 in central Italy. But the miracles associated with that little image can't be explained away so easily. Today in 1986 in Pripyat, Ukraine, which was at that time part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the USSR, a nuclear plant called Chernobyl experienced a full catastrophic meltdown. The super simplified explanation of nuclear power plants is that nuclear fission is hot. I mean hot, like pizza rolls right out of the microwave hot. And that heat is transferred to a cooling system, specifically to water, which becomes steam, which moves through really big turbines, which are wrapped with magnets and wires, which create electricity. The worst thing that can happen then is that the nuclear power creating all that heat can find itself without enough water and other coolants to keep it under control. That would mean superheated air, superheated concrete, and superheated metal. And that can mean explosions and the uncontrolled release of radioactive materials, which act like tiny suns, giving people tiny DNA-destroying sunburns. It can contaminate drinking water, the food supply, air, clouds, and all kinds of other things. DNA really doesn't like that much radiation. And that's what happened at Chernobyl. The safety systems failed and the nuclear reactants got out of their secure, shielded areas. And now about 1,100 square miles of the Ukraine are in an exclusion zone to which access is limited because of security, but also because the radiation in the area is still deadly. The area is scheduled for cleanup in 2065. Until then, lots of science experiments are being done on the plants and animals in the region to determine the long-term effects of radiation on DNA. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. And until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.